Hey everyone, my name is Brugly, and today I'm bringing you five of the safest backrooms levels that I've gone over recently. These levels are a nice break from the man-eating, monster-filled levels that I normally go over. So I hope you enjoy, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the outro. Level 6999 is classified as a class habitable and is literally 100% safe. Like, <laughs> there's nothing here that can hurt you. I mean, unless you can't swim. This level has a kinda similar mythos and story as the Promised Land does, where it's a level that everyone seeks out and tries to get to, but no one knows how to get here or where the entrance is or anything like that. So it's safe to say that the level is pretty much a hot commodity. Think of it like an oasis in a desert. Everyone wants to be here, but it's virtually impossible to find, and it's mainly talked about through whispers and stories throughout the backrooms. The methods used to actually get here are very strange, and so far, it's only thought that two people ever have made it here, uh, but even then, no one knows if it's even real, or if it's just a figment of people's imaginations. The level first started to be rumored to exist back in 2019, and that is when apparently the first person got here. The physical description of this area looks like a never-ending comic complex with roofs and walls made out of rooms with pools in the middle. On the outside of these pools, there are chairs and tables and lanterns and lights in the corners of the floor and in the ceiling, and these lanterns and lights are responsible for most of the lighting here. The level almost feels futuristic in a way, like it's almost too clean and precise to be from the modern time, but it's the back rooms, so no, no one knows what time it takes place in. Most of the time, this level is colored in purple, but apparently sometimes it can be red, pink, yellow, blue, and even blacked out. So it just depends on what time you go there, I guess. As you can expect, it is foretold that this level has abundant tools and supplies laying around, like almond water and such, on top of there being chill pools that you can relax in here. It almost seems too good to be true in a way. The pools are said to go very deep, deeper than the pool room's pools, just said pools like 15 times, and they aren't actually made out of water, but instead it's a water-like substance. Getting into these pools is like an instant sanity cleanse because it calms you down and helps you relax and chill out and forget about your anxieties, kind of like the fountain of youth that rejuvenates you in a way. The pools are also emitting a relaxing water flowing noise that can help you just chill out fully and fall asleep even. Apparently there's also an entity or two that just float around in the pools, but they're assumed to be passive and they won't attack you and they're actually facelings and they kind of just float around. To enter, as I said, it's not known all the tasks and all the stuff you have to do to get here or what you have to do in order to do anything because this level might not exist, no one knows. To exit, you have to ask one of the facelings that you saw in the pools to send you away and they will. But yeah, the reason I actually like this level is because of how mysterious it is. You know, I feel like the whispers floating around the back rooms of this perfect level where you can finally relax and finally chill, I feel like that's pretty cool. And it's kind of like a heaven area for the back rooms, you know, something for people to look forward to and have a purpose. It would give pretty much any wanderer something to look forward to finding and it would give them something to hope for and maybe even give them purpose or all of it could be fake and there could be no such thing as the neon pool rooms uh, but it would be cool if there was maybe one day we'll know for sure but as i mentioned and hinted at earlier in the video it's actually thought that you can get to this neon pool rooms level from the main pool rooms level but no one knows the exact way to do that but those two people i said that have been here supposedly came from the pool rooms and got there so if you're lucky enough, you might jump into those crazy pool rooms and be sent here, which would probably be more relaxing uh, because it doesn't get dark or scary or anything like that. It's just a bunch of infinite liminal pools that are, have purple lighting. I mean, literally, how much better can a level get? How much more relaxing can it get? Backrooms level negative 69, or the roads to abyss, is classified as a class 1A obstructive which means that it's safe, has no creatures or entities, but has a very strange abstract environment that could be potentially dangerous. The level also has another nickname, which is the Foggy Avenue, because it looks like a huge, expansive landscape of nothing but metropolitan roads, bridges, overpasses, that kind of stuff. 
with fog everywhere. So, the foggy avenue. The level is kinda laid out similarly to a huge dystopian city, but without the buildings. And it's like this because of how many roads there are that overlap each other, go into the ground, come out of the ground. It just seems so awe-inspiringly big. And that thick layer of fog never leaves the level, and it's really just everywhere at all times. It makes it impossible to see to the sky, so no one knows it's up there. And it also makes it really hard to see far in front of you. I mean, you can hardly even see 10 feet in front of you. And the fog itself can be any color, but the main common colors are orangish or bluish. And sometimes a mix of both. The actual architecture here is pretty weird too, because the roads and the bridges are made out of normal concrete and that kind of stuff from real life, but it's all stiff and foreign looking to humans. It looks almost like a blank slate for something that's not done yet, and there's nothing except roads, signs, stoplights and stop signs and stuff like that, and just this unfinished, unrefined look. On top of all that weird stuff, some of the bridges and overpasses have these really weird geometric patterns carved into the sides of them, which leads some people to speculate that this level wasn't created by humans, that it was created by another race of something, like aliens. Some places look like there should be skyscrapers there or some kind of building, but there's nothing, just a huge concrete slab. And there's no buildings at all on this level. There also aren't any vehicles either. Though the entire level is made up out of roads, there's no cars to be on them, which is cool and weird. Most of the actual roads don't have any visible starting point or stopping point, but there are some that pop out of the ground in random places and go straight up or sideways or right back into the ground. It, uh, it's weird. There are also traffic lights, stop signs, yield signs, intersection signs, and stuff like that placed in extremely random locations as well. And some of the lights aren't even at street corners or intersections. And they're just placed in the middle of the road randomly where there wouldn't even need to be a stop sign or stop light. So it makes us all question, what are the purposes of these lights? And why are they randomly placed? Some of the roads are looping and twirling. They almost look like roller coasters, which just adds to the confusion of trying to map out this level. But because unlike in normal real life cities, where the roads are laid out in grid patterns or similarly recognizable patterns, this level has no pattern. There is no method to this level. It's completely random and you can't even map it out or understand it because there's no usable geometry to do it with. Some think that in the past there might have been a group of people that lived here but fled for some reason, which leaves the level with this sort of post-apocalyptic feel. But that might not be true because there's not any graffiti or anything like that here, or marks in general. In fact, there's not even any chips in the concrete, no potholes, no chunks missing, no weathering of any kind. It doesn't exist here. And since nothing is broken or chipped, and none of the concrete looks sunbaked or broken whatsoever, the level is thought to be maybe invincible to time. Time might not affect stuff here. And the level is also constantly nighttime, so that'll help with not fading things away. The level also has some other anomalous features, which I'm about to get into. The first one is that it is impossible for two people to be sent to the same spot here at the same time. So if you and a friend no clip from a different level to try to get here, you will not end up in the same spot. Even if you no clipped from the same spot, you'll be sent to opposite sides of this level, and this level is infinite, so there's no point in finding them. The next anomalous feature is that fog that I talked about. It's the main anomaly here, well, because it's always there, and because it can change completely in color depending on where you are in the level. It could be in one section and it could be blue, and then 600 feet over, it could be orange. It all depends. The fog also induces this feeling of paranoia and anxiousness, and it makes you feel like you're being watched, because you can't really see into it or see past it, so you never know what's lurking in there looking at you. And those feelings of paranoia and stuff like that are amplified when the level starts to randomly play old music throughout its streets. Yes, that's right. The third anomaly is this random music that comes out of nowhere just when the wanderer is at their most paranoid point. That's when it starts, is when you're getting real paranoid. And that just pushes you right over the edge to insanity, I would say. And these next two anomalies that are the last ones add a really strange level of creepiness to this level. The first one is called the Upside Down. No, not Stranger Things. And the other one is called the Lights. 
So this upside down is an anomaly where randomly the entire level inverts itself into two halves. One half's on the ground and one is in the sky. Both versions have a gravity field and they can both be walked on if you can somehow get up there. But after a few minutes, the upside down anomaly will just disintegrate and leave anyone who is up there at the top falling into the void. Now that's really tough, isn't it? The last anomaly is the lights, and they look like these sparkling fireworks in the sky. Uh, the cause for them isn't known, and they only happen a few times a year, but uh, no one knows anything about them. So there's not much to say. There are no outposts here, and to enter this level, you can come from the regular level 69, which is just a huge straight road with concrete walls on each side, and to exit, you can get up in the upside down part at the top and fall down into the void to maybe be sent out, we don't know. Or out of nowhere, this level can send you out with no warning to level 413. No one knows how this happens or where it happens or why, it just does, and you can just be randomly sent there. That's pretty neat. Backrooms level 710, or Ring and Ruin. Let's dive right into it, shall we? Introduction. So Backrooms level 710, or Ring and Ruin, is a newly found level. It's classified as a class undetermined, since it's pretty new, and because several of the properties here are extremely mysterious and not really understood at all. The level entry starts with a quote from a wanderer named Amy. Quote, I opened my eyes to see a hound, so close that I could taste its hot breath. Foul saliva drips from those deadly fangs. A hunting knife materializes in my right hand. I know this place keeps the hounds from hurting me. It is as terrified as I am, poor thing. It disappears, and the knife becomes a chocolate chip cookie. So as you can see, off the bat, this level is already showing some weird properties. Level Description The level is made up of two distinct areas. The first is a silvery ring that's floating in the sky. The second is the ground under this ring with some ruins and an archway. And you'll want to hear what those things are all about in a second. So the silver ring floats horizontally in the sky, directly above those ruins on the ground. It never moves position and never goes up or down, but it's absolutely massive and is around 400 feet in diameter, which is the distance from one side of the ring to the other, and 400 feet is actually taller than the Statue of Liberty, so that kind of gives you a gauge on how big this thing is. There's no visible propulsion system or way that it's holding itself up there in the sky, so it's a complete mystery how it floats, although it might be a supernatural intelligence that keeps it up there. The ring interacts with one person at a time on the level, and that person is seemingly chosen from any other backrooms level to be sent to the ring randomly. Like they could just be walking on any level and get no clipped to this ring inside of it. And that person will be stuck inside the ring anywhere from 3 days to 23 days before they returned. So the inside of the ring is just a large hallway, and that Amy person from earlier was sent here for 20 days and was able to remember some of what it was like. She says the ring has no doors from the inside, only four distinct windows on each cardinal point, so like north, south, east, west, like a compass. Each of these four windows has a little room next to it with different purposes. The room by the north window has a desk and a chair in it with paper and pencil. The east window has almond water and food there. The south window is a bedroom. And the west window has a room next to it with a very small box inside that each person has to put a personal item in as sort of a sacrifice, apparently. When you're here, you're motivated to do certain things from this gut feeling that the level gives you. The ring itself seems to be alive in some way because it communicates with people on an intellectual level. It doesn't use language or signals, it just gives these people the feelings or the instincts to go do things. So for example, it could give a person the instinct to go to the south room or the north room. The ring itself seems to be like some kind of observation and evaluation structure that literally has the sole goal of studying humans to see how they interact with certain stimuli like those four different rooms. It's also thought that the ring was put here by maybe a higher power or an artificial intelligence because of how futuristic the technology is. Summary of the ring. 
So pretty much to summarize what I just said, the ring is a circular hallway with four rooms and each room has different things in it. The ring itself interacts with each person that goes there through instinctual brain waves. And it's almost as if it's observing how humans respond to stimulus. Sometimes this ring intelligence will even put entities or pictures of different backrooms levels in the hallways to see how people will react to them. Even though nothing will actually hurt you, they're just put there to see how you interact and change based off of what it shows you. It's kind of like a science experiment, and the humans are the test subjects. You know, you've seen those things with the rats in the mazes. That's kind of like what this is. But who's the scientist, and who's studying us? No one knows. The Ruins On the ground under this ring is a circle of earth with no vegetation. This circle is 1,320 feet in diameter, and in the middle of it, there's this huge archway called the Harbinger Arch, along with some other stones standing up beside it. No one knows how this got here, who built it, or what it actually means, but it's thought that this archway is a portal to different realms. And maybe even, just maybe, a true exit to the back rooms. Sometimes, if you look through the arch, you can actually see into different realities, even outside of the back rooms or the front rooms. These are completely different universes. And sometimes you can look through and see the real Earth. People have been witnessed walking under the arch and into it, and never walking out on the other side, so it definitely does lead somewhere, but no one knows where or if it's trustworthy to go into. The arch and the ruins are kind of treated as some kind of spiritual thing in the back rooms, and you get the vibe that they're sacred. After these ruins were discovered, other things that had been discovered previously in the back rooms kind of started to make more sense. Like there's these small carvings in wood and stone circulating through the back rooms in the shape of arches or rings, or there's whispers floating about of a so-called pilgrim's path being talked about in notes on the walls and in carvings. Either way, the ring and its intelligence and the archway and the ruins with their supernatural and interdimensional powers are some of the most unique things in all of the back rooms it seems. Next for the video is Level Heaven from Capitan Pavel. This level has a survival difficulty of zero and is safe and secure with no creatures. Level Heaven looks like an endless swirling maze of hallways and walls and roofs, all of them being made out of glass. The floor of the level is light gray and is the only thing that isn't actually glass. Since the walls and the ceilings are see-through, well, you can see outside, and what you'll see is a very relaxing, pretty sky. And in the sky, you'll see clouds and that kind of deal, and it's normally perfectly blue. There are not any entities in this level, it's just you and hundreds of miles of huge glass hallways looking out over an infinite sky pretty chill if you ask me. To enter this level, well this is when it gets tricky because you have to unalive. Which is actually why this place is called heaven, because there is a small chance that you'll be sent here if you do unalive in the back rooms. Because no one really knows where a person goes if they kick the bucket in the back rooms. But it is known that being sent to this level, heaven, is a possibility. To exit the level, you have to walk for miles and miles until you find a black door which will just randomly appear. Once you find that black door, you have to open it up and you'll be sent out of the level. Pretty neat, but I wouldn't try to unalive just to come here. And lastly for this video is Level Moon Beach from Izzy. Level Moon Beach is classified as a class 1 survival difficulty and is safe and secure and is pretty vibey. The level is split into a few different islands with one main one being the center of attention. And this main island is full of lush plants and sand and all of it is covered in different shades of blue. The sky in the level only has a moon in it. No stars, no clouds, just a moon. Which never moves and it never changes changes and it casts a blue glow onto everything below it. There's actually a few abandoned villages on some of the other islands that surround the main one, and the houses in those villages are made out of a stone called blue stone, which has never been found anywhere else except here. It's indestructible and it glows faintly blue, like all the other things here, and it's kind of worshipped by the entities that live here. There is one specific entity that worships them, and it's the only entity that lives here, and there is no name for this entity, but they're medium-sized humanoids that are bald and they wear rags. So kind of 
kind of like a monk or something. These creatures seem to worship the blue moon in the sky, and they have this blue moon relic stone thing in their camps that they're very protective of. They kind of worship it and pretend like it's a god or something. Very interesting. They're pretty nice if you don't ag them on, you know, you don't want to rough them up or anything. But in passing, they're pretty chill. To enter this peaceful level, you have to find some objects that are shaped like a crescent moon on any other level and touch it and you'll be sent here. But yeah, that was a pretty peaceful level if I do say so myself. However, I don't really trust the cult that much. So Backroom's level you win is classified as a class habitable difficulty and is safe and devoid of any entities. Harmful entities, that is. And that is pretty much the opposite of level you cheated that I went over a few weeks back. Which blew up, by the way, so thank you for that. This level is actually pretty weird because of how it looks and behaves and some other things, but overall, it's safe. The entire level takes place in a building that has 11 stories. The building is apparently out in the middle of nowhere, in a field, because you can look out the windows and just see a big empty field. When you actually get to the level, you'll start in an office lounge type place. Now this is the 11th floor, or the highest floor of the building. When you finally realize where you are, you'll immediately lose all your stress, and you'll feel relieved instantly. It's kind of like your body knows that you won the game of the back rooms. The rest of this 11th story is pretty normal for an office building. It's pretty liminal and pretty empty looking, but it gets a little weirder the further you go down to the stories below you. And in these levels that are below you, there's almond water randomly placed on tables and that kind of thing, and there's also facelings wandering around, but each level is different. For instance, the 10th floor is some kind of supermarket that's similar to a Walmart or a Safeway Vons or that kind of thing from real life. And there are facelings actually shopping around for things and working the cash registers here. And on the shelves, there is literal merchandise to buy. Like there's fresh food and fruits and vegetables and even seafood you can buy. And of course, none of that makes any sense because why would there be a fully functioning supermarket in the back rooms? But who cares? You just won. Now the ninth floor is full of weird looking restaurants also run by facelings. And these places are just named basic things like food, you know? They're also very liminal looking and they're mostly empty unless you run into another wanderer there or the facelings that work in the store. Now the eighth floor has a ton of bedroom type places in it. The bedrooms are small and plain looking, kind of like just ones you'd see in a house, like a spare bedroom. And there's also a balcony at the end of this floor that juts out from the building. If you jump off this balcony for some reason, then you'll just no clip back up into the bedroom floor or the eighth floor that you were on. Or it's thought that sometimes you can no clip into your bed in reality. Like you can just jump off the balcony and you'll end up back home. That's not confirmed or anything, but it's strongly thought that that's how it works since the balcony is only on the floor with beds. So it would make sense if you jumped off the bed floor and ended up in reality in your own bed, wouldn't it? Now the seventh floor is kind of like an old computer lab. The computers here are pretty normal. There's old and new ones, and it looks like a big school computer lab kind of. The computers can be turned on and off, but you can't break them. Even if you smash the screen, it'll just repair itself. There's also internet here that you can connect to apparently. The sixth floor is a really dark room with chairs where people just go to relax and chill after, you know, being in the back rooms for days or years. The floor is completely empty. There are a few random pillars holding the ceiling up, but there are just random seats around as well. The fifth floor is kind of like a dining area where there's tables and it kind of looks like a cafeteria here. And there can sometimes be entities as well. There's big long tables with seating and stuff like that. And you can occasionally run into another wanderer or two here just chilling and eating food. The fourth floor is kind of like a nightclub or a dance club. Nothing crazy, just random music and colorful lights and that kind of deal. And the music played here is very strange and unknown. The third floor is kind of like a movie theater that plays real life movies that you've probably seen before. And even movies that haven't been created yet. Like somehow this place can play unreleased movies, which might mean that this level takes place in the future. What do you think? The second floor is kind of like a regular shop with supplies and that sort of thing. A little bit of food, not as much food as the 10th story supermarket, but it's just a tiny shop. Nothing too special. And the first floor, which is probably the most special floor, is at the very bottom of this building. 
it kind of looks like a hotel lobby in a way, and it's a place to relax and to chill and meet other wanderers as well. It's kind of the hangout zone, if there are other people here at the time you're there. And apparently, people come here to tell stories and commemorate and just talk about the things they've experienced in their journey throughout the back rooms. It just looks like a huge liminal hotel lobby with nothing else really, just kind of empty, but there are seats there. And there is an important doorway in the middle of this hotel lobby that leads outside of the building which I'll get into in the exits portion. But now it's time for the entrance sections where you'll finally figure out how to get to this level and win the back rooms. Now, most of these entrances involve winning some kind of game in the back rooms. Like if you win the beasts game on level 4293, you have an opportunity to be sent here. Or if you win an arcade game on level 3999, the true ending level, you'll be sent here as well. It's also theorized that you can beat the Game Master at a level and have a small chance to be sent as well. So technically, you could get pretty lucky. Just by winning a game or an arcade machine, you could be sent here. To exit, you can go through the doors that I just mentioned on the first floor lobby and have a good chance of being sent to the front rooms. Or, at least it's thought. If you don't want to do that, you can jump off the balcony on the bedroom's floor to be sent to your own bedroom. Possibly. If it works like that. We don't know. And if it doesn't work, you'll just be no clipped back up to where you jumped. So yeah, this level is a random 11-story building with different enigmatic stories in it. Each story is different, and you can only get to this level by winning the back rooms. And then once you get here, well, you might be able to leave. We think. Could just be another fake exit. Who knows? That's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you're watching all of this 27 minutes, actually 26 minutes, if you're watching all of it, I appreciate you. And I, uh, yeah, I appreciate you. Comment down below what other levels you want me to go over and everything that you want to see on the channel, as well as my other channels. Speaking of my other channels, Brugly2 and Spoogly are in the description. Brugly2 gets reactions and gaming stuff, and Spoogly is my SCP channel. So if you want more of me, more of this style, go check those channels out. There's plenty for everybody. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.